Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to the channel. Continuing the topic of the thermal power station. Today we see the schematic arrangement. So I will give the heading over here, yes. The schematic arrangement or the schematic diagram of it. Okay. So I will take the book with me and I will just do it a stepwise over here right yes so the first thing is comes uh, uh, the first is the coal and the ash handling plant coal and ash handling plant so this includes uh, what I will write I will write I will write number one is the coal and ash handling plant so now I will come over here the coal is transported to the power station by means of rail or road and it's stored in the coal storage plant. So you have transported it and you store it over here in the coal storage plant. Right? Yes. Now you have stored it. This is in the power station, this storage. Right? Then what do you have it? This is passed into the coal handling plant. This is passed into the coal handling plant. What is the coal handling plant? Over here the coal is pulverized. Pulverized means what? It is crushed into small pieces. So then it, the operation becomes more effective. Over here they have written. Why are you protect? Why are you storing it? So storage is done. Of course, you could have general coal shortages. You can have coal strikes. The transportation can be, uh, you know, uh, there could be transportation problems. So you need to have storage. Pulverized means it's crushed into small pieces in order to increase its surface exposure. So the combustion process is promoted using a large quantity of excess air. Then the pulverized coal is fed to the boiler. This is fed to the boiler by means of what? By means of belt conveyors. What are belt conveyors? So that automatic that uh, that belt thing. You've seen it in the, the, the treadmill, basically the treadmill or you've seen it in the airport that luggage transportation. So these are belt conveyors, the automatic system. So the after pulverization that is fed into the boiler, right? Yes, the coal is burned in the boiler. Basically, it's not burned in the boiler. You have a burning chamber that is a furnace. Coal is burned in the furnace. In the boiler, you have water. So that water with that heat is converted into steam. Right, so the coal is basically not burned in the boiler. And ash is produced after the complete combustion of coal. So this, so they've not shown a furnace over here, you have a furnace, okay. After this, the ash produced is, is over here is uh, fed into the ash handling plant. Into the ash handling plant, right. Yes, so it, uh, it comes into the ash handling plant and further it goes where? It goes to the ash storage for disposal. It goes into the ash storage of, of which it is further disposed. So from here it is disposed, right? Yes, sir. It is worthwhile to give a passing reference to the amount of coal burned. So how much coal do you require? So for instance, they have shown over here is a 100 megawatt station that is operating at a 50% load factor. So this uh, requires about 20,000 tons of coal. 100 megawatt station operating at a 50% load factor requires 20,000 tons of coal per month per month and then the ash is what ash is about 10 to 15 percent which means in the 20,000 tons you have about 2,000 tons of ash so you have to properly remove it the proper removal of ash is necessary for the proper combustion of coal. So in a thermal power station about 50 to 60 percent of the total cost and operating a total operating cost consists of the fuel purchasing and its handling right yes then you have what then you have number two is the steam generating plant steam generating plant.
coal storage coal handling ash handling ash storage this is the coal and ash handling plant now the steam generating plant includes what it includes uh, the number boiler for the production of steam and then you have auxiliary equipment for the utilization of flue gases what are the flue gases so basically you have what you have your uh, fuel and then you have plus oxygen so this gives you heat plus the flue gases so I will just write it over here also that what are those flue gases I will write it for you over here uh, combustion fuel plus oxygen gives you what it gives you heat plus flue gases of course fuel plus oxygen this is what this is combustion so this gives you heat plus flu gases now what are these flues gases so they exist of hydrogen and nitrogen oxides and sulfur oxides yes yes this is a 50 50 percent conversion this flue gas is a waste the combustion gives you 50 percent heat 50 percent of flue gases so anyways the boiler <laughs> the heat of combustion of coal in the boiler is used to convert water into steam right yes at a high temperature and pressure then what do you have the flue gases from the boiler you have to eliminate them from the system so you have to exhaust them through the chimney so they make their journey to the superheater economizer uh, and then what uh, air preheater and finally exhaust it so i would draw over here is a superheater first superheater then you have economizer finally you have your air preheater and then it after that this is exhausted so the flue gases the flue gases they first come to the superheater then they come to the economizer and then they finally go to the air preheater and after this they are exhausted through the chimney we'll see this one by one right yes what do you have is superheater superheater the steam produced in the boiler the steam produced in the boiler is wet so you pass it to the superheater so it further increases the temperature of it and it further dries it up right yes dried and superheated which means the steam temperature is increased beyond the boiling point of water by the way of the flue gases on their way to the chimney so the heat of the flue gases is basically absorbed you are absorbing the heat from the flue gases and you are further giving it into your steam so the temperature and pressure you are increasing of your steam the steam is becoming drier it's becoming more superheated right yes superheating provides two principal benefits firstly overall efficiency is increased of course and secondly you have to provide dry steam to your turbine if you provide wet steam so what would it happen is and the corrosion could happen over there right yes the superheated steam from the superheater is fed to the steam turbine through the main valve so from the superheater you have a valve over here and basically through this valve you are controlling the flow of heat to the turbine and and the flow of heat will depend on what will depend on the load the higher the load the higher is the steam you need to know over there so you get it more the lower the load the lower the steam you need for the rotation of the turbine so the you, you close down the valve right yes sir next what do you have is uh, where is it uh, where is it through the main valve yes this is the main valve so the main valve is for what for the regulation purpose right yes sir then you have what economizer an economizer is essentially a feed water plant is a feed water heater economizer is a feed water heater and derives heat from the flue gases the flue gases from the superheater then goes into the economizer the economizer further draws the heat from the flue gases yes yes what is the feed water so that is coming from the condensate we're seeing we will see the feed water let's say this is further water so the feed water is fed into the economizer so the heat is that heat from the flue gases utilized to heat the feed water yes yes 
then what do you have a uh, feed water is fed to the economizer before supplying to the boiler the economizer extracts a part of heat from flue gases to increase the few flue gas temperature so from the economizer the the feed water then when heated comes back to the boiler right yes feed water i'm coming to that then you have the air preheater so what does this say an air preheater increases the temperature of air supplied for coal burning by deriving the heat from gases so for combustion combustion what do you need is for combustion of coal you need fuel plus oxygen so you've got your fuel in the burners uh, in the furnace over there shown as a boiler the overall thing so for that you need the fuel the fuel is over there you need an oxygen where would that oxygen come from so the oxygen would come from air of course it would come from air so what would happen is you need to have air over here so an air preheater increases the temperature air supplied so the air is coming into the air preheater so you have a, 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 a fan over here you have a fan over here which is a force draft fan which is the force draft fan which is giving you what which is giving you air from outside and it is going into the air preheater so the air preheater does what the air preheater increases the temperature of the air how does it temp increase the temperature so it has extracted further the heat from the the economizer and superheater cannot fully extract the heat from the flue gases so again it is passed into the air preheater which further extracts the heat from the flue gases and that heat is used to increase the temperature of the air being supplied from the surrounding and that air is that hot air now which is you know oxygen is supplied into the boiler for what for the combustion purpose right air is drawn from the atmosphere by a force dot fan and is passed through the air preheater before supplying to the boiler furnace boiler furnace right the air preheater extracts heat from the flue gases and increases the temperature of air used for coal combustion the principal benefits are increased thermal efficiency in increased steam capacity per square meter right yes so this was the steam generating plant which included the boiler superheater economizer air preheater and valve you could also say the next one is your steam turbine the next one is your steam turbine so what do you have is the dry and the superheated steam from the superheater is fed to the turbine through the main valve yes the heat energy of the steam when passing of the blade of the turbine is converted to mechanical energy so the heat energy over here we would say would be converted into mechanical energy where is it yes uh, uh, mechanical energy after giving heat energy to the turbine the steam is exhausted to the condenser which condenses the exhausted steam by means of cold water circulation so after the turbine where what comes it comes the condenser the exhausted steam goes to the condenser where it is what where it is condensed which means that it is converted back into water right yes then you have what number four you have your alternator you have alternator the steam turbine is coupled to an alternator is mechanically coupled so i would write over here this 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 like this it is coupled to an alternator alternator is what it's a generator fine so this is coupled to an alternator and what happens is the alternator converts this mechanical energy alternator shaft this convert this mechanical energy into electrical energy the electrical output of the alternator is derived to the bus bars through what through transformer circuit breaker and isolator so basically you have done what over here your electrical energy is produced now how do you utilize it so first you have to step it up you know transformers and then you have your uh, isolators right yes then you have your circuit breakers and finally you have your 
bus bars. So the, the, these are the electrical equipment you know very well. Right? Yes. Now feed water. Feed water. So we'll come to the feed water. I told you we have a term that is what that is your feed water. So the condensate from the condenser is used as a feed water to the boiler. Condenser does what? The steam is converted back into water. Now that water is again has to be used to the boiler. Some water may be lost in the cycle which is suitably made up from an external source. That external source I told you is a river or a lake or whatever it may be. So over here let's say we draw a lake over here. Let's say this is a lake or a river. Right? Yes. Uh, the feed water on its way to the boiler is heated by water heaters and economizer. So what do you have? The condenser and then you have what? Uh, where is it? So you also have a cooling tower over here. You need to have this water. This water is fed back to what? This water is fed back to the economizer. This water is fed back to the economizer, I told you, the feed water. And the condenser, you, all, you the, the lost water is make up, made up from the lake or the river. But on the way, you also have a feed water heater. You also have a feed water heater on the way. You also have a feed water heater on the way. Right? Then this is used to heat the water that is condensed and the remaining portion that is fed up from the lake. Right? Yes. Do we have any other thing? This helps in raising the overall efficiency of the plant. So how the overall efficiency is raised? Because you have already, uh, you know, uh, the steam is already utilized once and you can say that you are utilizing it once again. So which means that you are uh, getting up to the losses and you are increasing the overall efficiency of the system. Number six could be the cooling arrangement. Number six is what? It's the cooling arrangement. What do we have? In order to improve the efficiency of the plant, the steam exhausted from the turbine is condensed by means of a condenser. Water is drawn from a national source such as a su supply such as a river, canal or rake and is circulated through the condenser. The circulating water takes up the heat from the exhausted steam and itself becomes hot. Itself become hot. You have the steam over there that is hot. So you 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 take the water over there. So the water takes the heat. The cold water takes the heat from the steam, and the water itself has become hot. The this hot water coming out from the condenser is discharged at a suitable location down the river. So you discharge this uh, uh, this what this water at a suitable location anywhere at the river in case of unavailability in case the availability of water from the source supply is not assured throughout the year cooling towers are used so you have a cooling tower over here and what is the purpose of the cooling tower so the purpose is that if this lake or this river is you are not assured of it to be available throughout the year to be available for the span of time that you need it to be so you need a cooling tower a cooling tower so i would just you know put it over here some way like this uh, and this is connected back to the condenser this is connected back to the condenser right so this is this is a cooling tower is some sort of a cooling mechanism which is cooling the steam down understand it this way for now during the scarcity of water in the river hot water from the condenser is passed on cooling towers where it is cooled the cold water from the cooling tower is reused in the condenser right yes sir Similarly, you also have a water treatment chamber over here. I don't know where have they mentioned it. 
you also have a feed water pump over here to, to, to draw this before the feed water heater. Anyways, you also have a water treatment chamber and that is what that you need the water in the, and this is somewhere over here they have shown water treatment chamber. So why do you need it? Because you need soft water, you need clean water in the furnace. So the lake water may be dirty, it may consist of marine life, may consist of impurities. So that is first clean before getting it into the boiler. Right? Yes, sir. So I believe that I should finish this video over here. This was just a, ba uh, a basic schematic diagram. Coal comes, it's boiled, converted into steam, goes to the turbine, the exhausted steam is condensed, it is cooled, it is through feed water economizer, it is fed back into the furnace. So I believe I will finish this video over here. We also have a next section that is 2.6 is the equipment of the steam position where each and every one of these are, you know, a little bit of discussed. So maybe we do a little discussion on that as well in the next video. See you there very soon. Till then, take care. Goodbye.